everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. How are you? How's the weather where you're at? Is it sunny? Is it cloudy with a chance of showers? Do you have snow? I find it funny talking about cold weather and just winter in general when half of you are in the Southern Hemisphere, spending days on the beach in the hot, hot sun. So for right now, we're going to change that topic and we're going to immerse ourselves in another time entirely, the 1980s. Were you alive in the 1980s? If you were, or if you weren't, hold on to your seats. This is going to be a very fun episode. First, let me give you some context. Earlier this year, I asked some friends and family members if they could write a short story about their favorite decade. Now, a decade is a 10-year time frame. So, for example, 1970 to 1979 is a decade. 1980 to 1989 is another decade. I asked some friends and family members if they could write a short story about their favorite decade. My thought was, well, other than it being interesting to hear about their stories, Um, I also thought it would be interesting to step out of the 2020s and relive a decade in the life of someone else. What would their world look like? Culturally? Politically? What were they doing? What is it that made that decade so memorable? That's interesting, isn't it? Because this is an English lesson, I thought, well, they can paint this picture for you in their own words, their own voice, so you'll be exposed to new voices and vernacular, and decade-specific vocabulary. Do you know what a Walkman is? You will by the end of this episode. Today, you're going to immerse yourself in the 1980s with my Uncle Alex. This lesson will be divided into a few sections. First, I'll teach the words we use to talk about decades in English. Then, you'll hear his story. After which, you'll get further explanations so that you understand the story on a deeper level. Last but not least, you'll hear the story one last time. So are you ready? Let's begin with the names of the decades. And we're going to start 100 years ago. All right, so the 1920s, we often also call the 20s. So the 1920s were known as the Roaring Twenties in the United States. That decade was characterized by the rise of jazz music and economic prosperity, as well as lots of cultural change. Next, we have the 1930s, or the 30s. The Great Depression characterized much of the 1930s in the United States. It wasn't such a great time. There wasn't much economic prosperity like in the 1920s. Then we have the 1940s or the 40s. Now, because of World War II, the 40s were a difficult decade for many. Then we have the 1950s or the 50s. The baby boom was prevalent after World War II, most definitely in the 1950s. Then we have the 1960s, or the 60s. The Beatles rose to fame in the 60s. Of course, the 60s were also known as a time of significant social change in the United States, Uh, with the civil rights movement, 
You probably remember that from my episode with Rosa Parks. Then we have the 1970s or the 70s. The first Star Wars movie came out in the 1970s. The 1980s witnessed the rapid growth of the video game industry. The 1980s or the 80s, which we're going to talk about today. Next, we have the 90s, the 1990s. So the widespread adoption of the internet began in the 1990s. Then we have the 2000s. Now, if we want to refer to that time frame between 2000 and 2010, we usually say the early 2000s. In the early 2000s, we listened to NSYNC and Backstreet Boys on our CD players. Then we have the 2010s, referring to 2010 to 2019. Same goes for other centuries. So we had the 1910s, the 1810s, the 1710s, etc. Right? The magnificent Titanic sank in the 1910s. So let's go through them all. The 10s, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s, so on and so forth. All right, so let's head to the 80s. Are you ready? Let's begin. Hmm, my favorite decade. That's a tough one. I've had a great life, so I like them all for different reasons. But for your purposes, I will pick one. The 80s. Since I was born in 1960, for me, each decade represents a nice round number. For example, the 70s represent my teen years, the 90s my 30s, and so on. For me, the 1980s represent freedom, independence, and new experiences. The 80s also represent a 10-year period where my life changed the most. I started out the 80s in college at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. I enjoyed high school in the 1970s, but going away to college was like a rebirth for me. I never had a car or much money in high school so I didn't have much freedom to come and go as I pleased. I was always dependent on someone for a ride somewhere, and I hated that. That all changed when I went to college. I didn't have a car or much money in college either, but neither did anyone else. That's what made it so great. I was on a level playing field. I lived in the dorms for two years and in various apartments off campus for my last three years. My life revolved around going to class a lot and studying some, going to basketball practice, eating at the cafeteria, and socializing a lot. The best part, of course, was making new friends and socializing, especially at the nearby beaches. The friends that I made at Cal Poly are still my best friends to this day, more than 40 years later. One of the best things about my time at Cal Poly was the summers. The summer of 1980 was the best summer of my life. I worked seven days a week at the campus dining hall with a couple of friends. We bussed tables for breakfast and lunch, Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. It was such an easy job. All we really did was talk and laugh all day. At 1.30 each day, We would jump in my friend's car and drive to Shell Beach, where we would body surf and play frisbee until about 6 p.m., then back to campus where we would get a meal somewhere. Then it was to the gym for some pickup basketball or the tennis courts, then off to bed and repeat the next day. I calculated that I went to the beach 59 days that summer. We didn't make much money. Minimum wage was $3 per hour. But we didn't spend much either. Since they gave us free meals, all you can eat, and I worked every day, I ended up getting 16 free meals per week. The 80s were also the Reagan years. My friends and I were not political, but I do remember voting in my first presidential election in 1980. Like a lot of young people, we thought we were rebellious and cool for no particular reason. 
we all voted for the independent candidate, John Anderson. The 80s also brought us MTV, music videos, new wave music, and as a result, some pretty funky clothes and hairstyles. Remember Miami Vice on TV? The biggest pop stars were probably Michael Jackson and Madonna. The 1980s have also been described as the me decade, where greed is good. I know a lot of people were thinking about getting good jobs and making lots of money after college. Being a computer science major, I was at the forefront of technology. But computer technology was in its infancy then. Not only was the laptop not invented yet, neither was the desktop PC, the mouse, or the Windows operating system. The Sony Walkman was a must-have. It was a handheld cassette tape player with cheap headphones so that you could take your tapes and listen to music anywhere, not just at home or in your car. In 1984, I got my first job in Santa Clara, right in the heart of Silicon Valley. It was exciting. I was making actual money and got my first car, a dorky company car, the Chevy Celebrity. In 1986, I met Barb, my future wife, who worked at a nearby tech company. We got married in 1987 and bought our first home, a townhouse in Pleasanton, California. We ended up selling it in late 1989. In fact, we were sitting at our kitchen table negotiating with potential buyers, getting ready to watch the San Francisco Giants versus the Oakland Days in the World Series when the Loma Prieta earthquake hit. So the 1980s really did represent a couple of chapters in my life. My college years, the beginning of my career in tech sales, and the first couple of years of my marriage. Oh, what fun we had. Wonderful story, right? Big thanks to my Uncle Alex for this story. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you did as well. Let's go through the text in detail. First of all, my uncle spoke about the 1980s. He said that each decade represents a nice round number for him. Since I was born in 1960, for me, each decade represents a nice round number. What's a round number? It's a number that is easy to think about and work with if you're doing math. Usually it ends in zero. For example, 10, 100, 1,000 would be considered round numbers. He's considering the decades round numbers, 60, 70, 80. For example, the 70s represent my teen years, the 90s my 30s, and so on. A round number is not the same thing as an even number, always. You have even numbers that are like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and odd numbers that are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Round numbers are just the ones that are simple and easy to process in your head with zeros at the end. All right. So he was in his 20s in the 1980s, and that was a period of time when his life changed the most. It's also around the time he started college. In the U.S., college begins when we're around 18 years old. Most 18 year olds are thrilled to move out and start living on their own. That was the case for me. That was the case for my uncle. He hated depending on others for a ride in high school. In English, we say on with depend. Um, So Alex always needed to depend on his friends for a ride. In college, though, nobody had a car. Nobody had money. The situation was the same for everyone. He said, I didn't have a car or much money in college either, but neither did anyone else. That's what made it so great. I was on a level playing field. Now, I love this expression. He said he was on a level playing field. He was equal with his peers, with the people around him. Nobody was at a disadvantage. They were all on a level playing field. I was on a level playing field. He then describes how he spent his days. 
My life revolved around going to class a lot and studying some, going to basketball practice, eating at the cafeteria, and socializing a lot. We learned that his friends he made in college are still his friends today, 40 years later. And one of his jobs was working in the cafeteria. A cafeteria in English is usually a large room with self-serve buffet-style food. And there's a lot of people there, so there are a lot of chairs and tables or long tables and benches. Cafeterias are common in schools, university environments, some work environments, in offices where there are many employees. They might also have a cafeteria. And at the cafeteria, he bust tables seven days a week meaning that he cleared and cleaned the tables after people ate. We bust tables for breakfast and lunch, Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Even at restaurants, you might see a busser. It is a job to clean tables up, to bus them. B-U-S, exact same spelling as a school bus. Every day after work, He got in his friend's car, and they went to the beach, Shell Beach. At the beach, he played frisbee and body surfed until 6, around dinner time. Body surfing, you may know, it's a lovely activity. You can probably picture it. You surf with your body. Yep, you're in the ocean without a surfboard or a raft. Your floating device is your body and you use your own body to catch and ride waves. There's nothing like routine, right? Well, my Uncle Alex definitely had one. Each day was sort of the same. It was predictable. But it was great because it involved free meals, great friends, and physical outdoor activity in a beautiful place. San Luis Obispo, the city where Cal Poly is located, is a just very cute college community near the beach in central California, right off Highway 101. There are amazing beaches nearby, like Avila, Pismo, Shell Beach, where he used to go body surfing. And I highly recommend going to this area of California if you ever head up the coast. Some of the coastal cities like San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, um, all of those up in there, um, even all the way up until Santa Cruz are just beautiful and not something that you'll see if you head up the central part of California. That is for sure. So he then began talking about politics, somewhat briefly. He mentioned that the 80s were known as the Reagan years. Do you know Reagan? Ronald Reagan? Ronald Reagan was a Republican president who stayed in office from 1981 until 1989. And among conservatives, he's considered one of the best representatives of the Republican Party in history, at least in office. (laughs) Now, I won't go into depth about Reagan, but what's kind of funny is that he was actually an actor before getting into politics. So you can see him not only in his fancy suit, but also as a football player, like in the movie Newt Rockney, All-American. I don't know about you, but I definitely agree with the next statement he made. Like a lot of young people, we thought we were rebellious and cool for no particular reason. We all voted for the independent candidate, John Anderson. Did you feel like you were rebellious and cool when you were younger? Do you still feel rebellious and cool? (laughs) Oh, I just find that funny. And when you think of style in the 80s, what comes to mind? I'm not sure if fashion was universal at the time, but for me, Bright colors, like neon colors, bright orange, fuchsia, so bright pink, bright yellow, comes to mind. 
uh, bold patterns, shoulder pads, leggings, and parachute pants. Maybe you think of hair. I definitely do. I've seen the pictures. My mom's big teased hair and perms. So those very small curls. You might think of mullets. So short in the front, party in the back sort of hair. That was a typical hairstyle for males, usually. By party in the back, I mean long in the back. In any case, the style of the 80s is iconic. And what probably made these images burn into my brain and maybe your brain were MTV music videos. Did you guys have MTV? If I say Michael Jackson moonwalking, an image probably comes into your mind, right? If not, stop this audio and go to YouTube right now. You need to see that. But yeah, other than Michael, according to Alex, Madonna was also one of the biggest pop stars at the time. Alex mentioned new wave music. New wave music was popular in the 1970s and 80s, and it's characterized by its innovative, experimental sound, using synthesizers and electronic instruments. Did you like new wave music? Do you like it? To be honest, I was not familiar with the term beforehand, so this is new even for me. After graduating from college, Alex went to Silicon Valley. That was in the 1980s also. Silicon Valley is south of San Francisco, and it's packed with tech companies like Google, Facebook, YouTube. The list goes on. Today, it's a very expensive area to live. It might not be the most economical place to start a startup, but back then, it was where you should be in the industry. My uncle described the tech industry as being in its infancy. Being a computer science major, I was at the forefront of technology. But computer technology was in its infancy then. Not only was the laptop not invented yet, neither was the desktop PC, the mouse, or the Windows operating system. Speaking of technology, he mentioned the Sony Walkman, which was a must-have. The Sony Walkman was a must-have. It was a handheld cassette tape player with cheap headphones so that you could take your tapes and listen to music anywhere, not just at home or in your car. A Walkman or Walkman, became a generic term used to describe any personal portable audio device before the iPod, really. Even as a kid, I had a CD Walkman, which some people also called a Discman. The point is, Walkman were hugely popular. They were only discontinued in 2010, and by then they'd sold over 220 million Walkman. The last big thing that happened in the 80s for my uncle was meeting my Aunt Barb, who is one of the coolest people in the world. They got married, they bought their first house, and when it was time to sell their first house, a townhouse, they experienced something quite interesting. We were sitting at our kitchen table negotiating with potential buyers, getting ready to watch the San Francisco Giants versus the Oakland Days in the World Series when the Loma Prieta earthquake hit. The Loma Prieta earthquake is one of the biggest earthquakes in Californian history. Now, California gets earthquakes often, but they're not usually big enough to make headlines. Loma Prieta was different. Because of the baseball game, the World Series, the Loma Prieta earthquake was being televised as it occurred, as was the destruction. It hit the 6.9 mark on the Richter scale. It knocked down buildings in and around San Francisco. It also caused a freeway to collapse. Thousands of people were injured. 63 died. It's sometimes called the World Series earthquake. 
Now, my uncle wraps up his short story, noting how much his life changed in the 80s. Try to compare his story to your own. If you didn't live in the 80s, that's okay. I have some questions for all of you that I want you to think about. Which decade was your favorite? Why? What were you doing? What was happening in your country at the time? What sorts of things were new and trendy? What bands were you listening to? What was the style? Try to tap into your past and reminisce on that story. Consider writing it down or bringing this topic to your English class for a very fun conversation. I guarantee there's going to be a lot to talk about. Let's hear the story one last time. If you would like the bonus material for this episode, be sure to sign up to season four at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and have a good one. Bye. Hmm. My favorite decade. That's a tough one. I've had a great life, so I like them all for different reasons. But for your purposes, I will pick one. The 80s. Since I was born in 1960, for me, each decade represents a nice round number. For example, the 70s represent my teen years, the 90s my 30s, and so on. For me, the 1980s represent freedom, independence, and new experiences. The 80s also represent a 10-year period where my life changed the most. I started out the 80s in college at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. I enjoyed high school in the 1970s, but going away to college was like a rebirth for me. I never had a car or much money in high school, so I didn't have much freedom to come and go as I pleased. I was always dependent on someone for a ride somewhere, and I hated that. That all changed when I went to college. I didn't have a car or much money in college either, but neither did anyone else. That's what made it so great. I was on a level playing field. I lived in the dorms for two years and in various apartments off campus for my last three years. My life revolved around going to class a lot and studying some going to basketball practice, eating at the cafeteria, and socializing a lot. The best part, of course, was making new friends and socializing, especially at the nearby beaches. The friends that I made at Cal Poly are still my best friends to this day, more than 40 years later. One of the best things about my time at Cal Poly was the summers. The summer of 1980 was the best summer of my life. I worked seven days a week at the campus dining hall with a couple of friends. We bust tables for breakfast and lunch, Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. It was such an easy job. All we really did was talk and laugh all day. At 1.30 each day, we would jump in my friend's car and drive to Shell Beach, where we would body surf and play frisbee until about 6 p.m., then back to campus where we would get a meal somewhere. Then it was to the gym for some pickup basketball or the tennis courts, then off to bed and repeat the next day. I calculated that I went to the beach 59 days that summer. We didn't make much money. Minimum wage was $3 per hour, but we didn't spend much either. Since they gave us free meals... All you can eat, and I worked every day, I ended up getting 16 free meals per week. The 80s were also the Reagan years. My friends and I were not political, but I do remember voting in my first presidential election in 1980. Like a lot of young people, we thought we were rebellious and cool for no particular reason. We all voted for the independent candidate, John Anderson. The 80s also brought us MTV music videos, new wave music, and as a result, some pretty funky clothes and hairstyles. Remember Miami Vice on TV? The biggest pop stars were probably Michael Jackson and Madonna. The 1980s have also been described as the me decade, where greed is good. I know a lot of people were thinking about getting good jobs and making lots of money after college. 
Being a computer science major, I was at the forefront of technology. But computer technology was in its infancy then. Not only was the laptop not invented yet, neither was the desktop PC, the mouse, or the Windows operating system. The Sony Walkman was a must-have. It was a handheld cassette tape player with cheap headphones so that you could take your tapes and listen to music anywhere, not just at home or in your car. In 1984, I got my first job in Santa Clara, right in the heart of Silicon Valley. It was exciting. I was making actual money and got my first car, a dorky company car, the Chevy Celebrity. In 1986, I met Barb, my future wife who worked at a nearby tech company. We got married in 1987 and bought our first home, a townhouse in Pleasanton, California. We ended up selling it in late 1989. In fact, we were sitting at our kitchen table negotiating with potential buyers, getting ready to watch the San Francisco Giants versus the Oakland Days in the World Series when the Loma Prieta earthquake hit. So the 1980s really did represent a couple of chapters in my life. My college years, the beginning of my career in tech sales, and the first couple of years of my marriage. Oh, what fun we had. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.